what we're going to talk about today is uh, body position. You know, body position, like I say, we'll talk about it. It is important. But if you've got issues with counter steering or, you know, or braking or throttle control, things like that, now you've got a, pr a problem. And so that, that's where, um, where it's important to, to really kind of keep that in mind. Um, that said, there are some things where body position really does, it is critical. And we're gonna talk about all that. And I've got slides. I'm, I know that everybody likes visuals and visuals are good, uh, good to explain this particularly. All right, so body position. This is sort of my, my medley screen showing uh, different sort of riding genre, ro riding styles or riding, uh, you know, motorcycle, I don't know, what do you call it, genre, uh, where you got racetrack, you've got ice, you've got flat track, you've got adventure or off-road and street. And you can see the body position is actually, you know, it's kind of different in uh, you know, that the off-road versions are, um, are more similar than the, uh, than the street versions. And we're going to talk all about that. Um, and so this is just my intro screen, and we're going to be hitting on each one of these. Oops. OK, first off, I always forget this at the end, so I'm going to do it at the beginning, is that be sure to visit the Riding in the Zone website. Because you can see that in the search field here, anything you want, put in trail braking, put in body position, put in throttle, anything that and it, you're going to get. I have 200 articles, 200 plus articles in there. And if you want any rider training stuff, just click on this and it'll bring you to the rider training um, site. Um, the YouTube channel, I've got about 5,000 subscribers and I'm putting up videos a little bit more now than I, I've been kind of slow at it lately. Um, but now I'm starting to get the momentum back up. And I've got, again, I think I've got 100 videos on here, more than 100. And so there's just a really big resource that I, I really want to make sure everybody knows about. Um, I also keep forgetting about the, um, uh, the Corsica and Sardinia trip I'm doing with uh, beaches. And I, this is my, would be my third time with them. Uh, not, we were in Italy uh, two years. And this is just amazing. And I go, it's not only is it a great trip, but I go and I actually do uh, um, coaching as if you want it. And it's real informal, but it's a two week trip. And you know, it's not, not cheap, but it's really worth it where you go, what, um, what Beaches does and everything. I really recommend you check it out. It will be one of these you know, things that you can only do every couple of years, at least on my budget. The last thing is going to be uh, the Patreon. Uh, Patreon patrons. I've got a handful and I appreciate it. That's all I want to say about that. No obligation. All right, let's get into this. Uh, body position. Like I say, it's something that we really don't worry too much about. If we're on the street, if you ever do a street training with me, you're not going to hear me talk about it until maybe the very last bit of the day, except when we talk about slow speed maneuvers like tight U-turns in a parking lot, because that we do need to address early on. Uh, but when it comes to being out on the corners and, and at speed, body position is something that I will, once I get a good sense that you've got all the other components uh, under control, uh, where you're uh, trail braking, if we're working on that, and your cornering lines, and those things are all solid, then I'll start to talk more about body position. Um, and it's usually toward the end of the day. But that's, again, that just to give you perspective and the fact that it's really not a deal breaker if your body position isn't like great. It can be egregious, I suppose. I've not really seen it that on the street. Mostly people just sit up in their, in their seat and they don't really engage with the motorcycle with their body. And that's where I really like to sell it is that it's engaging. It has, it has specific benefits, which we'll talk about, but it's just engaging. I mean, look at this photo here. You can tell just by my body position, my body English, that I'm engaged in what's going on. Uh, the body, the bike's leaning in. I want to be inside of it, inside the inside the corner, uh, inside the center line of the bike, into the corner. And it it's going to not only is it going to help the bike turn and increase ground clearance and things like that, but it's just going to get the uh, you, you engaged and involved with your dance partner, which is your bike. Um, so this is. Well, if you take do the non-sport bike track day, we talk about body position um, about at, at lunchtime because, again, there's a lot to learn. Body position, again, is not on the top of our list, but it's something that people really 
enjoy and they really get a lot out of. So we want to make sure we address it uh, halfway through the day before, you, so you've got the afternoon to work on it, amongst other things. Um, so let's just go ahead and talk about um, uh, you know the benefits of it. Well, one thing I will say before I move on is that if you've really not used your body position and you haven't moved on your motorcycle much, then you're going to. This is going to feel very strange because you'll almost feel like you're going to fall off the bike. You won't. But if you've never done it before, then you really it will not feel normal, and it does over time. Also, if you know, we give you this, this seminar at lunchtime, and I'm talking about the non-sport bike day, and we say we give you the, the tips that I'm gonna give you today, uh, tonight, and you go out there and you swear you're, you're hanging off like crazy, you're doing like what I'm doing here in the photo, and in reality, you see the photos later and you're pretty much just sitting straight up and down the way you always did. It might feel like you're doing what I'm doing here, but you're not really, but, it, but just only because you're moving just a slight bit beyond what your muscle memory uh, is, your comfort level, that's gonna make you feel like you're doing it uh, way more than you are. So when you practice this, you wanna exaggerate and really feel like you're hanging off a lot. And in reality, you're not hanging off very much at all. Um, that said, hanging off, when I'm talking about hanging off, I'm not talking about hanging off like a racer. I wanna talk about that too, because there might be some people here that wanna talk about that a little bit, but I wanna touch on it for a, a little bit. Um, is I'm just talking about getting your body to the inside. That's really all I'm talking about, um, the way I'm doing here. The lower part of my body is also shifted over slightly um, on the seat. And that's just because I'm moving quite a long, you know, along pretty quickly on this, on the tiger. And I was dragging the foot pegs. So I wanted my body to kind of you know, get myself in position so I can gain more, more ground clearance. Okay, what are the benefits? So this is a diagram that you might have seen before. I've used it in Motorcycle Consumer News in my book. And you know, so it's just one that Dave Huff actually originally uh, came up with and I just re redrew it. But if you can see the little circles with the, you know, with the target, it looked like nuclear <laughs> symbols, but that's sort of the, uh, uh, the symbol for the center of gravity. If you are sitting, if you're in line with the motorcycle, now the bike center of gravity, um, and your center of gravity are in line, that means this combined center of gravity, which is between the two, is going to be also in line. Now, if you move your body to the inside, now this top one here is your rider center of gravity, and the, the, rider, the bike center of gravity doesn't change. It's, it's where your motor is pretty much. That can't change, but your body uh, center of gravity can by you moving inside, and now you can see how the, uh, the combined center of gravity changes. And what does that do for you? Well, look down at the little arrows here. Uh, it, it gains your ground clearance. The motorcycle does not have to lean as much if you've taken that center of gravity and you've moved it down and inside. And again, that's by using your body position. So uh, you'll hear it from a lot of NER folks that have taken the non-sport bike day and they started to apply the, uh, the body position seminar tips that we give. And in the morning, they're dragging their floorboards, they're dragging all their parts on their, on their low, you know, either cruisers or uh, even some of the sport tours, they're dragging things. And you go, and you kind of feel like a hero when you're doing it. Well, good. But uh, the fact is that you can, uh, you know, gain yourself more, less risk uh, through less lean angle just by moving your body to the inside. Um, Nick I. Nash, the Yamaha champion school, he talks, they have a mantra or a saying about lean equals risk. So reduce lean and you reduce risk. And this is one way you can do that. So people that apply this then in the afternoon on the track day, suddenly they're going just as fast as they were before, but they're not leaning so much. And so now they're not dragging their floorboards or their, or their foot pegs or their side stand or whatever they're dragging. And, but they're actually going the same speed and they can actually go even a little faster and then before they then touch down again. At that, that point, you're at the limit of your motorcycle and you have to really respect that and slow down. But this gets you so that, how does this apply to street riding? All right, so you get into a corner and the, the turn tightens up and you have to lean more. You have to get that, the motorcycle to turn tighter, but you're running out of ground clearance. You're dragging everything. 
well, what can you do? Get your body to the inside. Now you've gained more ground clearance and the bike hopefully won't lever itself uh, on the pavement. And, uh, and you can get, get the bike to tighten up and lean over more. Um, so that's really the, the practical safety benefit of being able to do this and do it comfortably so that you feel like you're, you, know, you can do it anytime you need it. Okay. Uh, so this is parking lot course. This is you know dealing with somebody who had never done any body positioning of beyond just sitting upright. And you can see how I'm encouraging him. I had to pull him pretty, pretty uh, forcefully to get him to even do this much off, you know, off his, uh, the center line of his Harley. Uh, there's a thing I'm probably telling him here is like, look in the mirror, you know, check, check the mirror uh, so that he's got his body over to the, his left and getting his elbow to bend, uh, the inside elbow and the outside elbow to straighten out, just the different tech, the different things that help you to get into that position. You don't do anything with your butt because, you know, obviously with a bike like this, the, the seat is kind of a bucket and it keeps you uh, locked in there and that's fine. You don't need to hang off, um, but then just get that upper body over and all the benefits of gaining ground clearance comes from just getting your upper body, your head and your shoulders uh, over toward the inside. Uh, here is, uh, I'm gonna show this because this is Pete and his, his now fiance, this is the first day they met. <laughs> and Pete was giving a, uh, the, uh, not the uh, body position seminar um, with Sylvia and this is how they met. <laughs> I think that's cute. So track days aren't only for uh, learning how to ride, it's also for, for meeting your fiance in the future, right? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, okay, so one thing I want to just show you here is just, again, how, you know, Pete's telling her about the whole idea of, of feeling relaxed on a motorcycle and getting the bike to do what you want it to and using body English to help do that. Um, you only want to use the amount of body English that you need for the purpose that you need. Most times I just, I'm pretty much, you know, sitting upright on the motorcycle on the street because we're really not going fast enough to need to get, to get into the uh, into the inside body position uh, until I get into the twisties because in the twisties I'm still not going fast enough that I need to get my body to the inside. I'm not dragging anything on my tiger, uh, but I want to get engaged. I want to be. I want the motorcycle to respond better, and so by getting my body to the inside, the bike just feels better. It op it it sort of responds better, and I engage with the road and the bike way more than, than if I was sitting upright. I, I equate this with, with the motorcycle being your dance partner. And if you're straight up and down and stiff, think about you dancing with somebody and being straight up and down and stiff. It's just no fun, no fun for, the, for your dance partner or for you. So loosen up. Um, I wanna show you also something, do I have it here? Is the... No, I have uh, Sylvia a little later um, showing, I'm gonna talk about hands and feet because it's not all, all about your body. Um, so here's again, it's a street bike. This is, you know, on the racetrack again, but uh, you can see the body position is just, it's rather simple. I have my knee out here only because that's, you know, I'm going quick enough that, uh, that I felt like I could, might touch my knee down. Uh, so I want to just have it, that's what the knee out is for, is for a gauge. It's not for holding yourself up or anything like that. It can be, but that's not what its purpose is. It's really a feeler for, for a lean angle. Um, so, but again, the body position is just to the inside. I want you to notice the uh, elbow. I mentioned it before, the inside elbow is bent and the outside elbow is straighter. It's still bent. And, but you, it's in a position that you are su supported by your torso. And right now I've got my inside of my thighs against the back of the tank. And this one here is also on, the, on sort of on the back of the tank, but this one's coming away. Um, and that's what, gives me a good purchase on the motorcycle so that I can then be really loose on the handlebars. And that's a really important thing. If you get into a position on the bike and you feel like you're hanging on because you feel like you're going to fall off, then you're doing it wrong. The whole point is that you get, uh, get fluid on the motorcycle and, you can, and, and having stiff arms, that would be a big problem. We wouldn't want that. Um, so here again, parking lot course, and this is an exaggerated uh, you can see me giving a real exaggerated look of just what I was talking about. Inside elbow bent, outside elbow straight. And again, I'm exaggerating so that you'll exaggerate too. Um, and this, again, this is somebody on a sport bike, but we had folks on, the Har on Harleys and all sorts of things, you know, 
working the same technique. It's just the arms are a little bit different position. Uh, here's again, this is a regular track day and this is my daughter Janine giving the, uh, the, what she likes to use is sort of barging into a door, your shoulder barging, breaking down a door. That's one way to think about it. So that your elbow or your shoulder is kind of inside shoulder is down. It's not sticking up because that's where you might've heard the term being crossed up. Um, I have a photo in a little bit to show that. Uh, and, and that's because that you tend to get into the, the corner and you, you hang inside, but then you get that upper, that uh, outside elbow or shoulder up. And that's something you want to avoid because you're kind of then defeating the purpose because your upper body is still over the tank. Even if you're, you know, you think you're hanging over, your, your kind of head is still over the center of the bike. And that's something you want to avoid. And this is one way to do that. This is a sort of body position seminar that we do um, at the track day. Uh, okay, let's move on. All right, so here we got street bike. Uh, now I'm in a, a much more aggressive um, speed and position. And you can see my, my, for, my inside shoulder, this would be this one here, is low and, and inside. It's really pointed even into the track. So I'm really getting myself leaned into that corner. And my elbows here, I've got a, a Tono, which is an upright handlebar bike. And so even with, you know, it's not a, uh, it's not a uh, clip on, you know, sport bike, it's got high handlebars, but still, it's still the same thing as far as uh, my elbow is bent. And this one here is straighter. Um, and then I just lean forward and that's how you get, you know, the a upright handlebar sport bike into a, you know, same position that you would if I had, you know, lower handlebars or clip ons. Um, and so here you can see the knee dragging and that's, you know, it's all cool and everything, but really we just use it to, as a gauge. Um, I can tell I'm gonna, if I drag this for very long and I still tighten the, the corner, I'm gonna then drag my toe and that does happen. But uh, again, it's just a, at this level, it's a very helpful thing to, to do. So this is a uh, Tony and I wanted to show you this cause this shows uh, uh, what that crossed up sort of uh, body position is. So on the left here is Tony back in their late 90s and, or maybe early 2000s. And I took a photo or somebody had a photo of this of him and I Photoshopped him into this position over here. And so you can see now that his, his head is now down and inside and he's looking through the turn more and his shoulder appears to be down and, and lower. And that's a much more um, uh, useful and, and effective body position than this because his head now is still, see, you can still draw a center line. And you can see his head is over the center line. And the head is a, a big part of this because there's a lot of weight. And so you want that, that head to be down toward this area here where you can see over here. So again, that's something that again, for sport riding and that's what this is, but um, it's again, to just drive the, the idea home that your body has a, a big role to play um, in, in really enhancing the motorcycle's handling. Um, well, let's see. I'm going to get to uh, other points that you guys who are street riders are wondering why, you know, why aren't we talking about more of that? We'll get to that in a sec. Um, as far as feet and hands go, this is the, in the hang off position. This is where you would want your feet. Now, when you go to street riding, just have your, the balls of your feet on the foot pegs. That's enough. Um, but when you're doing more aggressive, sporty hanging off, you can see the end of the foot peg is actually right just at the ball of my foot, just in front of it, between my toes and the ball of the foot. And that's actually, if you look at the bottom of my race boots, that you'll see there's a divot there from many miles of, of having the uh, foot peg there. Uh, on the track bikes, I don't have the rubber part, and so it does sort of wear into that. Um, this is a street riding stance that when people, I see this on the racetrack too, uh, that they end up still riding as though you're cruising down the highway so the foot peg is in the is in the arch of the foot of the foot or the boot, and that's a, a problem because as you start to um, as you start to lean more, you're going to drag your your foot more, and that's dangerous. You don't want to do that. You could catch a toe. But the other thing is that when you are being more active on the motorcycle, you want to be in a stance more like a tennis player, and that means being on the balls of your feet, so like a basketball player or a skier that you're you're always on the balls of your feet so that you can maneuver. Uh, fluidly. And so you, you actually don't, you can just almost lift yourself slightly up off the seat so you can reposition yourself 
uh, if you wanted to, to position yourself off the seat, but you don't really have to do that. You just still want to weight the foot pegs in a proper way that will give you that purchase that we were talking about so that you can move your body and still have your arms uh, be, be relaxed. <clears throat> this is the photo with Sylvia that you remember with Pete and his fiance Sylvia, where I wanted to focus in on a floorboard because you, those of you who ride with uh, floorboards, you want to still be, whenever you can, be in this position where you can have your foot, uh, the foot peg at the uh, ball of your foot. Well, how can you do that with a floorboard? You move your foot back to the back edge of the floorboard. And this heel is what I use to drag my, I drag it as I would my, uh, my knee on the track. It's what touches slightly before the, the floorboard. And so as soon as I feel that, that heel starting to drag, then I know if I lean any more, then the floorboards are gonna start to, to, to drag. Not a big deal, as long as the floorboards do, uh, do hinge. Um, but you can see this, uh, this brake lever, that's got, that thing's hanging down quite low. So I would want to make sure that, that the boot gives me an idea of, of just how much I'm leaning. Now, do I bevel the, edge, the heel of my foot a little bit? Yeah, a little bit, but I don't drag it. I, I'm just like, it'll go down, it'll just go like that, and then I can just lift it up slightly, the, the heel, um, and I can maintain the, the uh, lean angle. But the other thing, again, is to have the, the uh, backside of the floorboard at that, you know, sort of just behind the, uh, the ball of the foot is plenty. Uh, and that's going to, again, again, get you into that tennis player's um, position, a more of an active position where you can then move your body left and right uh, with having and using your foot pressure on your floorboards to uh, help you uh, do that without upsetting the chassis. All right, let's talk a bit about hands. So one of the things about body positioning and hands, we talked about this if you came in last uh, week with when you talked about ice riding. And that is like holding the, uh, the throttle or the grip, you know, like a screwdriver and not like a, uh, I don't know what this is anyhow, uh, but, but like this. So that when you're in a position, this is important when you're on the racetrack and you're hanging off, is that if I'm like hanging off like this and I want my, you know, I want my um, hand to be in a natural flat position. But when you're straight up and down, this is what's going on here is you've got the, you wanna have the, uh, the uh, handlebars as much as you can adjust them or the levers to allow you to have your arm and wrist to be more or less straight. Um, you know, if you can adjust your lever, if oftentimes I'll get on somebody's bike and their lever is way up high so that my, my wrist is bent like this and I immediately tell them that they need to want to lower it. And now you've got much more, much better control. Same with the clutch side. Now, the other thing about this photo is it's showing two finger braking. And this is something that I, I encourage everybody to do, whether it's these two fingers, these are the ones that make most sense. But uh, people do use com different combinations. On uh, real sport bikes, you can get away with one finger sometimes in dirt riding too. But what this does is it allows you to you know, you operate the brake and also operate the throttle and, or, and keep good, uh, good contact with the, with the throttle. Whereas if you have all four fingers over the grip, then you, you're sort of just palming the throttle. Uh, and in an ideal world, if you were in an emergency braking situation and you were on a bike that needed all that, you know, four fingers of, pr of pressure, and maybe you have kind of weak hands, then in an ideal world, you would train yourself in an emergency to go and, and reach for all four fingers. But that in normal riding, using two fingers is going to give you more control when it comes to uh, particularly like trail braking. Uh, where are we here? All right. So, uh, hey, Mike, are there any uh, there's one, I only see one question. Yeah, okay, nothing. Okay, I'll just keep moving. Okay, boss. <laughs> yeah, uh, I figured this would be a segue if anybody had any questions. Yeah, uh, sure. Let's see. I'm gonna talk about slow speed maneuvers now. Um, and we'll go back and we'll talk any other questions that you have about what I've, I'm kind of moving through this rather quickly um, because it's not a whole lot to it. It's get your body to the inside. That's pretty much it you know, and it, it, it's just not as easy as it sounds. It's, it's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. And because you're, you've got muscle memory and you're, it feels awkward to get yourself into a different position other, other than just straight up and down for most, most street riders. Um, even for new track riders, that's just the way it is. You know, you have to sort of overcome that, that sensation. 
And one of the things we work on in the parking lot course and uh, certainly with the street riding, uh, street courses that we do is uh, slow speed maneuvers because everybody needs this work and everybody wants it. If I ask you know, a request, what do you want to work on? Everybody says, well, I really struggle with slow speed you know, parking lot U-turns and stuff. I said, yeah, everybody does. And so we work on that. Well, what's the, there's a whole, well, maybe we'll do a thing on slow speed maneuvers, uh, U-turning, which we did last year. Maybe we'll do that again later this year. But I don't want to go into the whole thing. But as far as the body position part goes, is that you need to then do the opposite of what I was just telling you. When you're at speed, you get your body to the inside center of the center line of the bike. Um, but when you're going slow, if you did that, you're now creating a lever for gravity to actually want to you know, pull, pull the bike down. So you want to counter that. It's called counterweighting because your bike leans into the corner and you, keep, you stay upright. So if you were to do this, then again, you're giving gravity a whole lot more uh, leverage to have the bike fall over. Uh, the other reason to do this is that, it, it, well, when you, when you do it this way and you're making a turn, it just pivots better around your butt than if you're inside and the bike's wanting to fall over and you have to control that fall over and it's very hard to do. So keep your body upright and that's what's gonna allow you to maintain balance. It's what it's for is to maintain balance. So you actually weight the outside foot peg or floorboard. And this guy here, his, he has very little weight on this foot right here, the one I'm circling. And he's got almost all his weight on his right floorboard. And he's got his butt shifted over to the, to the right edge of his seat. Uh, even if you don't shift your butt, you still you keep your body upright and the bike leans underneath you. Here's another example. <clears throat> and again, the head turn is important. If you talk about body positioning and your head turn, your head is positioned well into the corner whether that's at speed or uh, at slow speed maneuvers like this. And again, same thing, you know, I like to, in this case here, I would probably have my feet back again. I can see how his foot is flat on the floorboard and even forward. That's not a balanced position. So I would have my feet back even when I'm doing slow speed maneuvers. Um, but again, I want my feet under me. That's where you're gonna get the most, uh, the, the best balance. Gold wing. So you can see this guy here, he's now got, you know, his foot peg is, is still a little bit in the arch of his foot, but he's got it, you know, better. And he knows that that's where he's going to get the best feel uh, for, the, for the bike and get the best balance. And again, that head turn, you can see he's got his butt off the seat. Even though this is a scooped out seat of a gold wing, he's got his, his butt off as best he can. And again, he's another thing that you want to do when you're doing slow speed maneuvers, uh, uh, body position related, is you need to scoot up. Because if he was sitting way back and trying to do this, make the turn, because you, you know, to do the most efficient or the tightest U turn, you're going to want to turn the handlebars almost to full lock. And if you're all the way back like this and you're trying to turn the handlebars, you're going to eventually end up with a, a limitation of your arm straightening out. Um, when I was riding a Indian Chieftain once and I was doing tight U turns, uh, I couldn't make the turn as tight as I wanted to because my right, my outside arm was fully, you know, stretched out. So I actually literally scooted right up onto the back of the gas tank and then I could make the turn. So again, the position you have on the bike matters as well, um, which gets us into uh, some off-road riding. Now this is an extreme example of the body position where you're on the top of the bike, the bike leans beneath you. Um, so this is the same as in a, a tight maneuver, same position I would be in, but this case here, and for off-road riding and dirt riding, there's another purpose for this, and that is to make to get the your body position to be pushing the bike downward. Same thing, like I mentioned, if I was leaning with the bike right here, uh, and I'm on a compromised um, surface, you know, where traction isn't exactly uh, the the most optimum. And if I were to do this, then I'm asking gravity to go ahead and just slide me out of there. So by being upright like this then I'm actually pushing, but through a center of gravity, pushing the, uh, the whole bike and my body downward and not away from me. Okay, so okay. yes, sir. Uh, question that's probably relevant to the picture you're just showing uh, from Dirk, uh, which is he pretty much rides you around other than snow or ice, uh, but he wanted you to discuss body position during wet or slippery moments. How? How much lean can a bike handle in those conditions and how much effort's worth keeping the bike, you know, upright during turns? Uh, and then if you want to add to that, I've got uh, somebody else who asked about 
forward controls and, and how to deal with that with forward controls. Yeah, okay, good questions. Very good questions. Uh, first off, I'll, I'll answer Dirk's question, which is, um, this is one of the great things about riding in the rain is because riding in the rain is something, you know, traction that's available. There's a, a canned answer I can give you and that you're gonna have about 70 to maybe even 80% of your dry weather traction in the rain. So that's pretty good, right? Well, it, the problem is that you might have 80% of your dry weather traction here in this part of the where you are right now, and then it could be 40%, you know, 15 feet up the road. So the variables are change quite a bit. So, you know, the idea of um, body positioning when it comes to slippery surfaces is that the biggest thing is being loose. Because if the bike starts to slide, you know, in any way, and if you tense up on the handlebars, that's just gonna cause it to go. So when the bike starts to, to drift like that, if you can let the handlebars, particularly it's the front tire that's your concern, the rear tire can really slide and, and you're not gonna necessarily crash. But that front tire, if it starts to slide and you don't let it recover, then it's gonna go down and it'll tuck. So it's about being loose. So your body position, number one, and again, this goes back to like I was saying at the beginning, is that body position as people think of it is sort of down the list of things that you want to, um, to manage uh, for safety. And the, one of the top ones is being loose on the handlebars. So, and this actually really is the best example of it is when you're in a slippery or wet situation and you're not quite 100% sure how that front tire is gonna to, to operate is that you wanna actually weight your foot pegs and to not only to, you know, some people say it's lower your center of gravity and all that, meh. It's more that you can give yourself that good purchase from your belly button down so that you can be as loose as you can from your belly button up. And that's when that front tire starts to slide and it let it do it. That front tire will kind of slide like this and then it'll gain and it'll slide again um, if you let it. And sometimes it'll just slide away. Don't get me wrong, it, that can happen, but I'm talking about you're at the edge of it or you're getting a feel for it. Because here's another part of it is developing a traction sense. Great thing about riding in the rain and like track days, people, you know, obviously we all want a dry track day, but if it gets wet or it's raining for a track day, don't bum out. It's really one of the best ways that you can learn about traction. Um, and so when it comes to this, the body position itself, if I'm, if I'm riding in the rain, I'll pretty much do what I would normally do in corners if I was uh, in, in the dry riding faster. So I will be riding slower, but I will still probably do the same body position. It's, that's because I want to have the bike more, the tires more in the center of the tire the contact patch. So I will lean in a little bit to kind of keep the bike more upright. Um, you know, it's, it's really the tires, street tires are designed to handle good lean, you know, a fair amount of lean angle. But if you can get the bike to be upright, that's okay. Problem with that is if you hang off too much and the bike starts to slide, you're now on the inside of it and you're, you're actually causing the bike to slide out from under you, which goes back to what I was just saying about the photo that's here with me on the ice is that I'm upright, and in, in a lot of cases, if I knew that the bike was, the, the traction was really compromised, I would actually, um, like I say, do what I'm doing here and kind of keep my bike, my body more upright so that I'm not really adding to the problem of a slippery surface. Um, so I'll probably stay upright on the bike to do what I'm doing here and try to push the, you know, my body weight down to the uh, contact patch. Um, but it, you know, it's, like I say, tires are really good. As long as you're riding sensibly in the rain and your tires are in good condition and all that, don't worry about it. The whole, the biggest thing is relaxing, okay? Body position for relaxation is really the, the, your, your priority. Uh, so there's a long answer to that question. Let's see. Um, what was the other uh, question? Oh, forward controls. Forward controls. Got it. And so foot, forward, position, not foot, foot position on the peg and forward controls. Absolutely. So... Forward controls, I actually sort of just mentioned how you manage that, and that's with um, this situation here, that you can't move the controls, but you can move your feet. So do what you can do, and that is to move your feet back. Um, there are issues with forward controls when it comes to doing slow speed maneuvers when you want to maybe use that rear brake as a tool. Um, so, but forward controls make it harder, put it that way. Think about a skier or a uh, tennis player, you know, um, 
trying to play tennis on their heels. And that's what you're doing on with forward controls. So it makes it harder. But, th but again, there are things you can do. And this is one example of that. That's a great question though. Uh, kiss the mirror. Let's go back here, Bob, to everyone. Have you used the term kiss the mirror to move the body position side? Yes. And that's what uh, that photo um, early on, uh, let's see this one here. This one, whoops. This one here, that's what I was telling him to do is kiss the mirror or check your teeth for broccoli, whatever works for you. <laughs> um, okay. Any other questions about that? See, I'm looking here, missed at the beginning. Nope, that was it. Okay, good. We're You're recording good. this too, folks. So uh, we can uh, review this later. Okay, so slow speed maneuvers, we talked about that. We talked about once you get off road and you're starting to get uh, compromised traction. Um, but let's go even more. Uh, I'm gonna actually skip this one for now. Uh, skip that one for now, I'll come back to it. Yeah. I'm gonna go to this one again. And this is where we're talking about um, off road riding. And this is in the dirt. So this was the Colin Edwards boot camp in Texas. And they have these, uh, these uh, TTR 125s and they have a knobby on the front and they have a uh, street tire in the back. The whole idea is to learn how to drift the bike, you know, like a flat tracker. So you're sideways, like, like in the ice, like we do here. Um, so the traction here is even sketchier. It's definitely sketchier than on the ice. It's easier to ride on the ice with the tires that we have. Uh, out here, you can see even the ground gets a little bit polished and it gets really slick. And that's the fun part of it. But if I were to lean in and in line with the bike, I would absolutely be on the ground, you know, so I have to have my body upright. And as far as dirt riding goes, you know, with a dirt bike like this, the body position is really critical for that same reason. I'll actually go here um, that even though Paul is leaning in with the bike here, uh, he's got his weight on the outside foot peg. So that it's again, it's putting the, the leverage of the bike straight down. Now, if he was leaning inside too much and the bike would still want, it would want to slide in this sand here. So he's balancing the bike and making sure that he's giving the bike as much traction as he can by his body position. And now you can see that head turn um, and he, standing is something again, off-road riders, we could do a whole thing on off-road riding, but Paul's using his knees here to keep himself uh, good purchase, you know, nice uh, stability, and so that his arms can be loose, especially off-road, because that front wheel is going to go do all sorts of things, and you kind of have to let it. Um, uh, Tony is standing up. So standing up positioning is something, again, off-road is really important, you know, or uh, adventure riding, because the reason you want to do that is because as the bike bounces around, more so than maybe your suspension can handle, that you want to have a second set, set of suspension with your legs. And then also you wanna have your arms to be bent. Tony's uh, handlebars are a little bit low for him. Uh, if he were in any sort of attack position, he would, his elbows would be bent more. He would be more forward with his upper body. Um, and so this is again, another form of body positioning. It's something we work on if we ever, if I ever do an off-road course again, um, adventure riding. This is uphill. So again, this is something that even on the street, this is an exaggeration. And this is why it's such a great photo is when you go uphill, you lean forward and you don't get up off the seat or anything like that. But when you're going up a steep hill, you would give yourself a little bit of a lean forward. If you're leaning back like that and you're going uphill, now you've just put all the bias onto your rear tire and you've got not as much weight on the front tire. So now the front end feels vague. And now you could really start to lose the track, lose traction if you were on an uphill with a curve and you were leaning back. That, that could be a problem. So you want to get that balance over the, the two tires or you know, in the middle so that you're balancing, you know, putting weight on load on both tires. And going uphill like this, and this is an exaggeration, where it's a very steep hill and uh, on a dirt bike. And if he was leaning backwards, oh. he'd, he'd fall over or he'd do a wheelie, you know, and that would be a loss of control. So again, these are just examples and they're all over when it comes to motorcycles. I see, uh, I see we've got another question here. Can you talk about timing and place of lean? I practiced, went from not doing much to hooking too much. Uh, yeah, that's great. I was just talking to Paul Duvall this afternoon about this. He's who run, he runs uh, Tony's track days now, the, uh, the regular track days. And we were talking about body position because I mentioned I was doing this tonight. And at a high level, very high level, we start to talk more about timing and not only timing, but dynamic lane position or lane, 
uh, body positioning, which is to say that at the beginning of the corner, I'm in one position. At the exit of the corner, I'm actually in a different position. I change. So I might go in, you know, inside like this and into the corner. And as I go into the middle of the corner, I drop. And as I come out of the corner, I lift the bike up. So there's a, that's the, an example of, you know, the three stages of body positioning at a high level. Um, so as far as timing goes, um, I'm not sure who that is. It's a phone number. Um, I'm not sure exactly what example you're giving. Maybe you can uh, type in that and I can answer it later. But the timing is that you don't want to, you want to get in position before you drop the bike into the corner. That would be the ideal, as opposed to when you're, you're in the corner or already right at it. And now you're not only are you getting yourself in position, but you're counter steering at the same time. That's too much. You want to get one thing done at a time. So you get yourself in that little bit of a position and then you counter steer. And what's that that's going to do is it's actually going to preload the bike so that the, the motorcycle is going to fall into the corner easier. So you'll need less counter steering pressure to get the bike to lean. So the timing of that is shoulders inside, counter steer, and the bike will just go right into the corner and it'll fluidly go, go through. So that's a great question. Um, somebody, we were in the White Mountains last summer and ended up on a dirt road with very loose gravel. What should body position be on surfaces that want to move the bike around? Uh, relax the handlebars. That's really the number one thing. When you're in a compromised position like that is the first thing people do is they clamp on the handlebars thinking that you can control it. It's not what you're trying to do. Off-road, you kind of are you're facilitating a general direction. <laughs> uh, and you know that might seem like not control, but it kind of is in that the front wheel is going to hunt. It's gonna kind of like try to find where it, it needs to be for the general direction to be you know, where you wanna go. If you don't let that front tire kind of drift a little bit and steer and, and correct, then it's gonna really, you're gonna be fighting it and the tires are gonna constantly be you know, uh, sort of cutting into the, uh, into the surface. So relaxed handlebars, I can't say that enough. How do you do that? Again, that's how you get your body, your belly button and lower in that position where it really allows you to be really loose with the handlebars. If you need to move up forward, a lot of people sit back and their arms are locked like this, that's a problem. You can't have loose, you can't let the handlebars do that see my shoulders are moving. So if, I, uh, if I'm screwed up a little bit, now my elbows are bent, and that's a, a thing off-road riding is elbows bent because you're allowing the bike to do this and that and that front tire to kind of do all it needs to do. So weight the foot pegs. You know, you can't do that the whole time you're on a dirt road necessarily, but over the parts that get really kind of, you know, you get on some sand, just sort of put a little more weight on the floorboards or the foot pegs, get your feet back, back edge of the floorboard so that you're balanced and then let the bike kind of do its thing and relax. You know, easier said than done. I understand that. Okay, let's see, what else do I have? I think if anybody else has more, any questions, and I, there's more to this. I can definitely talk about this more, but I've hit the highlights. Um, those of you who are, uh, have done track days and you've, you've seen the, the uh, body position seminars, whether you're doing regular track days at this point or the non-sport bike days, really, if you ever read my book, The Riding in the Zone book, that I have three stages for body positioning. One is just the, the basic one, which is just get your upper body into the inside. That's it. Don't do anything else. You don't have to hang off the, with your butt or anything like that. Just move, you do it right now. You're sitting in a chair. Why don't you just move your, your body to the inside, whichever side, do, do both sides. Now, if you'll notice, if you do a little bit more, notice the weight of your body is now, is now on the inside sit bone, your, your, your butt. And so that's the second stage is when you do it a little bit more, now your body, your butt's still not moving. It's just that you're rocking onto the inside sit bone and you do it in both directions. You can do that in your chair right now. And you just, it's simple. It's really it. The more the, that just applies to a little bit more spirited cornering uh, or a little bit more ground clearance. I need more ground clearance, get your body over more. Handlebars relaxed. Okay, that's it. That's the second one. So the first one is just your upper body. You can just move at your hips, uh, at your waist, I should say. And then the next one is where you move uh, on your sit bone, right? Okay, 
The third one is what I'm showing you here in this photo, which is a full racer hang off. And it's all the same things. It's just that now I've moved my butt to the uh, inside, uh, more of the inside edge of the seat. And for those of you, we have a whole detailed uh, body position curriculum for uh, this type of riding, but that doesn't apply to street riders. Let's put it that way. Um, I, I don't do this on the street. And there are times I suppose when I've ridden on the dragon and I've done some of this, you know, get my butt off the seat because I needed the ground clearance. Because the more I can get off the bike, the better ground clearance I have. Um, the, uh, the part of this, again, that the reason I can do this and be so relaxed with my arms, look at how bent they are, is that I've got my body, my inside of my thigh is locked in. My, that knee has got me so that I am not going to fall off the bike. I'm not going to anyhow because centrifugal or centripetal force is keeping me on the bike. Uh, I'm not just going to fall over. If you tried to do this at a standstill, I would fall over. The bike would fall over. But at this point, I'm in, I'm in a balanced state. But I still need to be uh, feel secure, and so that's where the hips come in and the inside thighs. Um, it seemed like I was going to make another point, and I don't remember what it was now. Uh, anyhow, you also want to make sure that you are only hanging off as much as you need to. So I'll work with people that are kind of novice track day riders, and they'll be hanging off way more than they need to, and you're just wearing yourself out. So you hang off only as much as you need to. Be efficient and be... Uh, um, you know, have it be appropriate, which brings us back to street riding. Don't do this on the street unless you want to get, you know, a lot of attention from people that you don't necessarily want attention from. Um, so let me see if there's anything else on this. Notice my foot position. Now, this is a case where I have to get my feet back just so I don't drag my toes. Um, but this is where these boots, if you look at the soles of those boots, you'll see, you know, this part right here, just kind of just in front of the ball of my foot. It's, there's a divot there. It's about the size of a quarter. Um, so that's, again, that's, again, what puts me right where I want to be for that, that tennis player sort of balance position. So, okay, I'm going to stop sharing and take any more questions. Let's see, I think there was another one. Okay, obviously off-road riding seems very beneficial, but have you ever heard of mountain biking as a tool to improve motorcycle riding? Absolutely, no doubt about it. So anything you can do that, that actually challenges your balancing skills, skiing, anything like that is going to translate uh, into motorcycling. Uh, and now you've got the two wheel you know, component when you're talking about mountain biking. Um, but I tell you the big thing about like riding you know, on a mountain bike or I'll tell you even hiking is traction management. So it's understanding that some, some surfaces and slopes are gonna give you the traction that you need and some aren't. And how do you handle them? Well, you angle your foot in a certain way. You get yourself like off road. If you've got a, uh, let's say a, a really slippery route and it goes like this, but then it goes up this way, or this is a rock. Where do you put your front tire? Right there. You don't try to climb up it because you're gonna slide down it. So that's the sort of thing you learn and that help, that's directly helpful uh, for off-road riding. For, for street riding, what you're really trying to do is to train yourself to just recognize traction robbing situations, you know, surfaces. And so that it's an instinct that you just know that you know how to, what to do and where to put that tire and to know not to do certain things at certain times. And the timing of when you roll over something that's got some sketchy um, uh, traction, that you know not to do anything and I mean nothing and then once you get past it then you can do your maneuver whatever it is um, throttle or counter steering or whatever so uh, fitness helps a lot absolutely as far as cyclists goes uh, I will say something about that and this is directly uh, pertinent to uh, body positioning and that is that um, I mean you know what am I I'm, I'm in the, I'm in my 60s and I can go out and ride three days on the track in a row and ride pretty aggressively. And I'm really not sore at the end of the day. And I could do it, I could do it two more days. Uh, and how is that? Because I, I don't really, I'm not doing a whole lot as, as far as working out goes. You know, I stopped going to the gym and all that because of COVID and all that. So I hadn't really gotten back into it. So how can I do it? It's efficiency. So I know exactly where to put my bike, uh, my body on my bike when and for how long and for how much. And that that's what it is, I'm conserving energy. And by doing this, by using my body, I'm actually making it easier to maneuver the bike. And I talked a bit about that. 
I can get the bike to tip in really easily if I pre-position -po -pre my, my body and the counter steer is really quick and efficient and I don't have to, I don't have to work hard at all. And other things like if there are two consecutive, say right hand turns, right hand turns for me, I, I'll get into my position, I'll go through that right hand turn, but I won't sit upright between the turns, I'll just stay in that position. And so I'm already set up for, for the next right hand turn. So things like that, as few times that you can need to reposition yourself, the better. Even down the straightaway, you'll oftentimes see, um, let's say at, um, uh, see Palmer, actually Palmer or Thompson, we got a left-hand turn onto the straightaway. Now, actually Palmer's not so good because it bends to the right in one direction. But say Thompson, where I've got a right-hand turn down the straightaway, another right-hand turn. I will actually keep my butt to the right all the way down the straightaway, but I will tuck my, the upper part of my body behind the windscreen. So that's just a couple of examples of just being smart, you know, work smart, not hard. And that's how I can do that. Uh, again, I'm using my legs much more than my arms. So my arms really don't work out. And my legs are pretty strong. I mean, everybody's legs are pretty strong. So use, use the, uh, the muscles that actually uh, that are to your advantage and those are your leg muscles. All right, is there anybody else? I think I've talked about everything. I'll probably stop here and go, oh, I forgot to talk about that. But um, remember, I've got articles and videos um, all about body positioning and uh, so check those out. I mean, a lot of the questions will probably get answered. Um, so if there's no other questions, it's like we had like 45 people or so, not too bad. What about 52 originally and uh, you know, a few have dropped off. But yep. uh, before yep. everybody goes, I also want to mention that next week, uh, Ken will be talking about more so instead of skills, uh, doing some bucket list roads in the Midwest and West that Ken has done on a trip uh, you know, over the last few years. Um, so it's really going to be more kind of a conversation around those bucket list roads uh, should be a fun uh, meeting, uh, but just so you know what it's about and I'll post that up uh, shortly so you have access to it. Okay. Great. It'll be fun. Hope everybody can join us. Thanks a lot. Thanks. guys. Take care.